Good morning everyone. This is Dr. Deepak Vyas, Head of the Department Chemistry and I will be teaching you this subject which is known as Environmental Management. The course code is CH152 and the credit is 200. It means that you will be having two lectures per week and the question paper will be of 100 marks. You will be having two exams, midterm 1, midterm 2 and there will be an end term exams. In midterm 1 exam, it is of 25 marks, midterm 2, it is again of 25 marks and the end term will be of 50 marks. Therefore, the total paper will be of 100 marks. So before starting the content of the lecture, I would like to share with you that what is the need to study this subject. I will explain you with some case history. Recently all the newspaper, media and the television, they are speaking about Nestle company. Nestle company is a food industry which is manufacturing various food articles and one of them is a very common food which is known as Maggi. But nowadays it is banned in India and in abroad also. So why it is so? The reason is that it contains lead during its manufacturing. It means that lead is very hazardous metal and beyond a certain concentration it can cause kidney damage, it can affect the central nervous system and it may also cause heart disease. I will give you one more case history regarding why you need to study this subject which is known as environment, environmental management because you people, you students are from management side. Some of you will be working with the industry and if you work in industry you need to know how the processing is taking place, what are the various fuels used in the industry, what are the various pollutants which are released from the industry, what is the effect of these pollutants on human life, plant life and on the environment. Therefore, the UGC, University Grant Commission, the highest body, they have made it mandatory for all the students whether they are engineering students, whether they are management students or they are medical students or they are doing some post graduation, everyone has to read this subject which is known as environmental management or for VTEC it is known as environmental science. So to start with, I will introduce you with some of the common terms which will be used during my lecture, the first term it is known as pollutant. The other term it is known as contaminant. Then we have primary pollutant, then we have secondary pollutant and then particulates and then smog. So first I will discuss what do you mean by pollutant. Pollutant means that so, pollutant means that unwanted, undesirable foreign substance. Now, what do we mean by unwanted, undesirable foreign substance? Is, is these substance exist in the environment or due to natural process or due to human activities, these particles, these pollutants are emitted into the atmosphere. Therefore, pollutants are unwanted, undesirable foreign substance. That is, they may be present in the nature naturally or they are added due to human activities. We human beings have been polluting the environment and it includes air. It is known as air pollution. If it includes water, then it is said to be water pollution and similarly we are doing pollution in the soil which is known as land pollution. If we are doing more sound, it is known as sound pollution 
and then we have radioactive pollution and many more. Therefore, pollutant means that any substance which beyond a certain limit may be added naturally or due to human activity which exerts effect on human life, plant life and on the environment this is known as pollutant. The other term is known as contaminant. So what is the basic difference between the pollutant and the contaminant? Pollutant, as I said that it may be present in nature and but due to human activity or natural activity the concentration of these substances increases and thereby it causes effect on the environment. But if I talk about this word which is known as contaminant, the contaminant means that it is not present in nature but it is added due to human activity. I'll explain you with some example like the uh, plastic pollution, then polyvinyl chloride, then there is one more poisonous gas which is known as phosgene gas. It is not present in the nature, but we human being for our personal benefits, we are adding these pollutants into the environment and similarly a contaminant will become a pollutant if its concentration reaches a limit set up by World Health Organization or UNESCO or any other pollution controlling agencies. Then we have primary pollutants. Primary pollutants means that these are basically gases. Gases means that oxides of sulfur, it may be SO2 or SO3, it may be oxides of nitrogen, NO, nitric oxide or NO2, nitrogen dioxide or N2O3, N2O4 or N2O5. The abbreviated form it is written as SOX and NOX where the value of X will change. X if it is 2 then it is known as sulfur dioxide and if the value of X is 3 then it is known as sulfur trioxide. Similarly, we have oxides of nitrogen, then these are in the form of gases. If the value of X is uh, 1, then it is said to be nitric oxide. If it is 2, then nitrogen dioxide, then we have trioxide, and then we have pentoxide. Next, what do we mean by secondary pollutant? These terms will be utilized uh, during my lecture, right from the first day to the last lecture. SOX, NOX, hydrocarbons, carbon monoxides, and particulates. The secondary pollutants they are produced by the reaction of primary pollutants present in the environment. They undergo various chemical reaction and they result in the formation of secondary product which is known as a smog. A smog is a general term which consists of a mixture of smoke and fog. The oxides of nitrogen which is released from combustion process, from industry or from various chemical manufacturing unit in the presence of hydrocarbons and sunlight undergo photochemical reaction and forms this product which is known as smog. In my later lecture, I will explain you uh, in detail how smog is formed and what are the various uh, effect of the smog on the human life, plant life and on the environment. Now I will proceed to the next part of my lecture which is the definition part. These terms I have already discussed with you. Then I will discuss about the, uh, you can see the picture, it is not uh, clear but then the hazy atmosphere due to smog formation. Then this is the earth atmosphere. This is the earth atmosphere. Let me share with you about this. The part of the atmosphere where we people live on the earth, it is known as troposphere. The part above it, it is known as stratosphere where the concentration of ozone is maximum. You must have heard the word ozone. Ozone is a protective layer which is found in the stratosphere which protects us from harmful UV radiation coming from the sun. Then above the stratosphere there is a mesosphere 
then we have thermosphere. All the human activity uh, which are on the troposphere, the various pollutants which are released on the earth, they travel upward and they sometimes reaches to the stratosphere height and they affect the ozone layer which is known as depletion of the ozone. This is also one of the content of our syllabus which is known as ozone depletion. So first I'll uh, 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 explain you about the definition of pollution. As I have already told you that there are certain substances which are produced either naturally or they are man-made. Therefore, how can we define pollution? Various definitions have been given from time to time that uh, what is meant by pollution. In simple terms, we can say that any alteration in physical, chemical and biological property of the environment due to addition of unwanted, undesirable substance, it is known as pollution. Means that when these substances are added into the environment, they affect human life, plant life and ultimately they cause major damage on the earth. Therefore, addition of unwanted substance thereby increasing the concentration of gases uh, which affect human life, plant life and to the environment, it is termed as pollution. In other words, we can say that alteration in physical, chemical and biological property of the environment due to addition of unwanted, undesirable substance which affect human life, plant life and to the environment, it is known as pollution. Let me discuss this slide which is on the screen. It says about the composition of the earth atmosphere. The gases, it is percent by volume. First, it is the argon, the percentage is 0.934. Then we have water vapors, carbon dioxide, neon, helium, methane, krypton, hydrogen, then ozone, then chlorofluorocarbon which is known as uh, freons. Therefore, these are some of the gases which are present naturally but we, as I said, that we are doing various process such as heating process, cooking process, power generation, then we have various industries such as chemical industry, petroleum refining industry and there are thousands of industries which are releasing various gases into the environment and they increase the concentration of the existing gases as well as the other gases also and causes pollution problem. As I already told you, it is an atmospheric condition in which certain substances are present in concentration which can cause undesirable effect on man and his environment. Air pollutants can be produced by two ways. First one is the natural and the other one it is said to be man-made. As the term natural means that they are produced naturally. The best example is the volcano eruption forest fires and vegetation burning. In case of the man-made pollutants, we can see that it is the heating process, it is cooking process, then we have industries and basically power generation plant which is manufacturing electricity right from morning till evening and to the next morning. They are using a fuel there are various types of power plant. If it is coal based, then it is known as uh, thermal power plant. If they are based on nuclear uh, fuel, then they are known as nuclear power plants. And if they are gas based, then they are known as gas based turbine power plant. And they release various gases into the atmosphere. Let us see what types of air pollutants are there. As in the previous slide, I have said that there are various gases, oxides of sulfur. It is SO2, SO3, oxides of nitrogen, NO and NO2, carbon monoxide, volatile compounds, and they are mostly hydrocarbons. Then we have particulate pollutants. Particulate pollutant means that smoke, dust, soot, fumes, aerosols, 
pollen grains, etc. And apart from this, there may be some radioactive pollutants also, which are there. This is red on 222, iodine 131, strontium 90, and plutonium 239, etc. So these are some of the air pollutants which are released from various sources. Natural sources, I have told you that the best example is volcano eruption, then we have forest fires, biological decay, then we have photochemical oxidation of terpenes, pollen grains of flowers, etc., radioactive minerals present in the earth crust are the sources of radioactivity in the atmosphere. Uh, if we compare the natural source and the man-made source, we can say that the natural source are less harmful as compared to the man-made source because I have already discussed with you about the thermal power plant. The fuel used is either coal or lignite and we know that almost all the fuel found in this earth mainly consists of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, a small amount of nitrogen and sulfur. Therefore, thermal power plant are the main source of air pollutants. There are various industrial units that we have vehicular, vehicular emissions which we will uh, discuss one by one in detail. Then we have fossil fuel burning, then we have agricultural activities, automobile exhaust is the major source of air pollution, automobile release, uh, gases such as carbon monoxide about 77%, oxides of nitrogen about 8% and hydrocarbons about 4%. Moving to the next part, you can see this picture, the motor vehicles. Uh, they are using a fuel, either petrol or diesel, and whenever any fuel is burnt, I, I have told you that it basically contains carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, a small amount of nitrogen and sulfur, and on combustion of this fuel, carbon is re released in the form of carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. Similarly, it, uh, if the sulfur is there, then it is in the form of SOX, S-O-X, oxides of sulfur that is SO2 which may be further oxidized to SO3 and later on sulfuric acid may be formed. So this is the slide about this uh, secondary air pollutants uh, when I have discussed about the terms involved. These are formed from primary pollutants by photochemical reactions and the best example is smog and acid rain are the main secondary pollutants. Moving to the next slide. You can see the picture, very hazy atmosphere due to smog formation. There are two types of smog. First one it is said to be London smog and second one it is said to be Los Angeles smog. We will discuss this in detail but I want to share with you that a few years back thousands of people died due to formation of this chemical atmosphere where oxides of nitrogen, hydrocarbons, ozone, they undergo various chemical reaction and ultimately they form a hazy atmosphere which is known as a smog and the ultimate product of this smog is known as PAN, P-A-N, it is known as peroxy SI nitrate and which is a dangerous compound when it is inhaled then ultimately it causes the death of a person due to suffocation. This is also one of the picture, very hazy atmosphere due to smog formation. Then this is the definition part, which I have already discussed with you. Alteration of the environment that results from human activity that adversely affects something of value. Next slide, we we'll move. The general terms I have already discussed, particulates, it is a type of air pollutants. For example, dust, smog and smoke. A smog is a mixture of smoke and fog. Then there are two types of smog I have already discussed, London smog and Los Angeles smog. Then primary pollutants, for example, sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide, then we have secondary pollutants, dust and smoke. And uh, what are the major cause of any pollution? Can anyone tell me? But I will discuss with you. What are the major cause of any pollution and more specifically the air pollution? The first cause it is known as increase in population. The more the population, more the resources will be needed and more will be the pollutants released into the atmosphere. 
Now the second point is rapid industrialization. We know that industry is a must for growing in this uh, world and to be economically sound country. But the industry, uh, though the industry must be environmental friendly, the fuel use must be environmental friendly and it should cause less threat to the environment. Then we have uh, rapid urbanization taking place. Then we have exploitation of the nature which is done due to human being. Therefore, air pollutants are those substances such as gases, mist and particulate matters which are present in the atmosphere in such concentration that they adversely affect human being and the environment. Most of the pollutants, they are present naturally and some of them are man-made and it is known as anthropogenic source and basically it is in the heating process, cooking process and various industrial process which results in the pollution. The natural ones are harmless, I know uh, I have already discussed. The main pollutants present in the air are hydrocarbons, particulate matter, carbon monoxide, NOx and SOx and when the natural level of these naturally occurring gases increases in the atmosphere due to human activity, it is termed as air pollution. Now comes what are the major sources of air pollution? We have talked much about air pollution that there is a fixed concentration of various gases in the atmosphere but if the concentration of these gases increases either naturally or due to human activity then it becomes a pollutant and if we are talking in terms of the air it is known as air pollution. So what are the major sources of air pollution? The first one is the combustion process. As I said that the major uh, pollution is released from power plant because a fuel is burnt, the water is filled in the boiler, steam is produced, steam is taken to the turbine and then the generator generates electricity. But during this process, the fuel which is burnt, it releases various oxides of nitrogen and sulfur into the atmosphere along with carbon. Let us see the chemical reaction. Almost all the fuel found on this earth, as already discussed, it consists of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen and sulfur. On combustion, what, what will be the chemical reaction? We have seen that C plus O2 carbon, when it is burned in the presence of oxygen, then it forms carbon dioxide. Similarly, hydrogen in the presence of oxygen will form water vapors. And if insufficient amount of oxygen is present, then CO2 will react with the carbon to form carbon monoxide. This carbon monoxide is a very dangerous gas and thousands of people every year die because of this gas because the affinity towards oxygen for carbon monoxide is much more as compared to and uh, I will discuss in detail about the effect of this carbon monoxide. Then we have sulfur and nitrogen which are present as minor constituent in the fuel. You can see the chemical reaction when sulfur reacts with oxygen it forms sulfur dioxide. In the, it can again then be oxidized into sulfur trioxide. Coming to the source of nitric oxide, nitric oxide is formed during combustion. This is due to nitrogen present in the fuel. N2 plus O it form nitric oxide and nitric oxide is further oxidized to various other oxides of nitrogen. Particulate emission from combustion that is smoke and what can anyone tell me what smoke is? A smoke is actually a solid incombustible material in the fuel and when small industrial, domestic and commercial furnaces are overloaded both unburnt carbon and inorganic matter are emitted. Other sources of pollution are forest fires, agricultural burning and coal. This is a pyrite coal, Fe2S, iron pyrite. In the presence of oxygen when it is burnt, then it forms Fe3O4 plus sulfur dioxide gas is released into the atmosphere. 
the another source of air pollution first one was combustion external the second one it is said to be combustion internal and the motor vehicles are one of the many sources of air pollution due to combustion internal the reason is that whenever fuel is burnt then the exhaust gases which are coming out of the silencer of a motor vehicle it consists of oxides of sulfur oxides of nitrogen and various other harmful gases along with hydrocarbons volatile compounds which cause much threat to the environment you can see that the basically the constituent of motor vehicle exhaust which is regarded as toxic are sulfur oxide sox as i already told you that the value of x changes x can be 2 x can be 3 and then we have oxides of nitrogen and carbon monoxide as well as hydrocarbons and the amount of these depends on the mode of operation of the engine and the quality of fuel used now this you must have heard that a pollution control sticker is required or every vehicle has to do a pollution control check otherwise you will be caught by the uh, authority therefore any vehicle which is uh, running on the road it should have a certificate of environmental pollution control clearance now coming to the pollution from industry apart from combustion system for generating heat or electricity or providing power the major source of air pollutants are chemical industry metallurgical industry petroleum industry lead zinc and copper industries are responsible for sulfide and some oxides of sulfur i'll explain you with some chemical reaction basically there are two types of industry first one it is said to be a ferrous industry and the other one it is said to be a non ferrous industry ferrous industry means that iron ore you must have heard the word iron ore which is the best uh, ore used for the manufacturing of iron and steel it is known as hematite the formula is known as fe2o3 plus 3 carbon this is known as coke when it reacts it form 2 fe that is iron is obtained and with the release of carbon monoxide gas therefore during metallurgy and during the manufacturing of ferrous metals we have seen that the uh, iron pure metal it is obtained but along with this carbon monoxide gas is also emitted into the atmosphere the second one it is said to be non ferrous industry means that during processing of lead and zinc the best known ore for lead and zinc metals are pbs and z and s pbs is known as galena g a l l e n a and zns is known as zinc bland now i'll explain the chemical reaction that during the processing of these minerals during metallurgy uh, how harmful gases are emitted into the environment and explain you with chemical reaction first i'll take the case of pbs that is the galena when it is roasted in the presence of oxygen it forms pure metal lead plus so2 gas is emitted into the atmosphere so you have seen that lead sulfide in the presence of oxygen when the ore is roasted it is one of the step of metallurgy then this sulfur dioxide gas is emitted into the atmosphere then we have another mineral which is known as zinc sulfide similarly when it is roasted in the presence of oxygen it will form pure metal zinc plus sulfur dioxide gas is emitted into the atmosphere therefore two main major industries are ferrous industry non ferrous industry and from both of them various harmful gases are emitted into the atmosphere now comes to next is the uh, non metallic mineral industry non metallic mineral industry it includes cement industry sorry then we have glass industry asbestos and coal mines are the major source of air pollution another industry which is creating pollution is petroleum refining 
refining industry means that crude petroleum contain hydrocarbons together with organic and inorganic substance compound of sulfur, iron and vanadium which are released during petroleum refining. So industry plays an important role. Next comes the chemical industry. Now oxides of sulfur is emitted from sulfuric acid plant. Similarly H2S and mercantans from paper and cellulose industry then hydrocarbon vapors, lead and zinc particles are present in the air from paint industry. Another big source is food and food stuff process. All of us, all of you know that odor or smell is the main air pollution in food and food stuff process. The odor from sugar meal is unbearable. Similarly, processing of animal residue and poultry farms are also unpleasant. So what actually these odors are? The odors chemically are complex chemical mixtures of aldehydes and related compounds with traces of amines which causes headache, nausea and psychological effect. Next, next source is incineration of garbage and garden cuttings. A small incineration of garbage and garden cuttings and leaves results in serious smoke problem and bad odor. Some industrial incineration such as burning of old tires and tubes gives similar results. You know that you must have heard two words. One is said to be PVC, polyvinyl chloride which is used in the manufacturing of the soup uh, shoal and similarly there is another compound which is known as PUF puff polyurethane chloride therefore these are also emitted into the atmosphere and they cause much threat to the environment. This is a table which summarizes the sources and various pollutants which are released from them. First one it is the petroleum refinery. The main pollutants which are released are sulfur oxides oxides of nitrogen, hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, particulate matter and ammonia, odors of mercantans and smoke. The other one it is iron and steel industry, sulfur dioxide is released as I have already told you then carbon monoxide, dust particles, particulate, acidic fumes and uh, Various smoke, uh, various types of smoke are also released. Then we have fertilizer industry. The main uh, pollutants which are released are oxides of sulfur (SOx). Then we have oxides of nitrogen (NOx), fluorides, ammonia, urea. Then fertilizer dust is also there, and smoke is also released from fertilizer. Then we have a thermal power plant. Main uh, pollutant which is released from thermal power plant due to burning of any fuel it is known as fly ash then we have oxides of sulfur because almost all the fuel it basically consists of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen and a small amount of nitrogen and sulfur on burning the fuel this sulfur is emitted in the form of sulfur dioxide nitrogen is emitted in the form of uh, NOx oxides of nitrogen then we have similarly uh, carbon monoxide due to incomplete oxidation of the fuel then we have unburnt coal dust chemical industry we have already discussed but to summarize oxides of sulfur, oxides of nitrogen, hydrocarbons, mercury uh, from chloroethylene plants and various acidic fumes are released from industry and basically chemical industry. Then we have the cement industry. Without cement there is no construction possible but you know the cement dust is very dangerous. This may cause asthma problem. Then we have uh, <coughs> lime stone used in this industry then fly ash is also liberated and smoke is a big problem from cement and glass industry and in the last you see that paint and pigments nitrobenzene organic compounds aniline solvents 
and H2S and other captains are mainly released from paper industry. And last but not the least, automobile. The exhaust gases which is released due to burning of fuel in the internal combustion engine are oxides of sulfur, then nitrogen oxides, hydrocarbons, and smoke. What are the various analytical and instrumental techniques used in the estimation of atmospheric pollutants? First one it is the dust. The equipment uses dust jar and the method of estimation, there are two types of master, method of estimation. First one it is said to be a volumetric method. The second one it is said to be a gravimetric method. Gravimetric means that the substance is first precipitated, then it is dried and then it is weighed. So, uh, the basis of measurement is weighing and in case of volumetric the basis of measurement is volume measurement which we do in the chemistry lab. Then we have suspended particulates. It is also done by gravimetric method, H2S, methylene blue matter. Then we have sulfur dioxide, air sampling kit. Then we have conductometry, ampirometry technique used for the estimation of sulfur dioxide, oxides of nitrogen, then we have spectrophotometry technique, then carbon monoxide, it is done for IR spectroscopy, gas chromatography, and last is hydrocarbons, this is done by gas chromatography. So this was about the introduction of uh, various terms involved like what do you mean by uh, primary pollutant, these are basically gases, what do you mean by secondary pollutant, they are formed by the interaction of primary pollutants and the best example is smog which is a mixture of smoke and fog and similarly we have discussed uh, what is the definition part of pollution and then various sources, biggest are the man-made source and in case of man-made source there was a combustion process, combustion external, combustion internal, then we have various industries which we have discussed in this lecture about the ferrous industry, non-ferrous industry, chemical industry, then we have cement industry, glass industry, food and food stuff, uh, process industry. Now when we have read about all these sources certainly these must have some effect on the environment, on the human life and on the plant life and the effect of these pollutants depends on two factors basically. First factor it is known as concentration. Concentration means that concentration. How much amount of this pollutant is present at a given time? It is termed as concentrations. Therefore, the effect of any pollutant depends on two factors. First one it is said to be concentration and the second one it is said to be a retention time. R-E-T-E-N-T-I-O-N retention time. It means that if there is a pollutant released from any source uh, how much time it will retain in that atmosphere. Therefore, the more it uh, the more the retention time, the more will be the effect of that pollu pollutant on the human life, on the plant life and on the environment. Therefore, the effect of any pollutant depends on these two factors. First one it is said to be concentration, the other one it is said to be a retention time. Now we will discuss the effect of these pollutants one by one which is released from one source or the another source. The first it is known as effect of carbon monoxide. As I have already told you that almost all the fuel whether it is a solid fuel, liquid fuel or a gaseous fuel it basically consists of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, a small amount of nitrogen and sulfur. Therefore this carbon monoxide is emitted due to combustion of these fuel or automobile exhaust or from industry where the fuel is used because on burning the fuel if insufficient amount of oxygen is present then carbon it will result in the formation of carbon monoxide rather than carbon dioxide because if insufficient amount of oxygen is present then incomplete oxidation will take place and it will result in the formation of carbon monoxide gas. The average retention time 
of this carbon monoxide gas is very high. It has relatively long retention time in the atmosphere and in, during the start of my, this topic I have told you that the effect of pollutant depends on two factors. First one it is said to be a retention time. Therefore, if the retention time of this pollutant is more, then it will have more effect on human life, on plant life and on the environment. Now let us see how it creates a problem. This carbon monoxide, you must have heard that those people which are living in the village area during winter, they burn uh, uh, gas which is based on a natural fire, a natural fuel which is either wood or coal to warm their houses. But if all the doors and windows are closed, then insufficient amount of oxygen will be there and the carbon will not be oxidized into carbon dioxide and ultimately it will form carbon monoxide. This carbon monoxide gas has 200 times more affinity with towards oxygen therefore it dissolves readily with the oxygen. In our human body in the blood a red pigment is known is found which is known as hemoglobin. The function of this hemoglobin is to carry oxygen to different organs of our body and we remain alive. But when this carbon monoxide, it reacts with the red pigment hemoglobin of the blood to form carboxyhemoglobin and the person dies due to suffocation because when carbon monoxide reacts with hemoglobin, it forms carboxyhemoglobin and the oxygen carrying capacity of the hemoglobin is lost and the person dies due to suffocation. So this is the chemical reaction which shows that how carboxyhemoglobin is produced. CO plus HB, HB stands for hemoglobin, it forms carboxyhemoglobin and when carboxyhemoglobin is formed then the oxygen is met, not carried to different organs of the body and if the person is half dead or uh, is about to die then we can provide him excess of oxygen which will break this compound carboxyhemoglobin into free carbon monoxide and free hemoglobin and hemoglobin will then again start carrying oxygen to different organs of the body. The next part is effect of sulfur dioxide. You know that the coal which is burnt in the thermal power plant for producing heat this heat is used for boiling the water in the boilers, the steam is produced and the steam is taken to the turbine and the turbine moves and the generator generates electricity. The majority of the oxides of sulfur is released from thermal power plant because coal is used as a source of fuel and it leads to the formation of sulfur dioxide. So what is the possible effect of this sulfur dioxide on human life and on the environment, on the plant life? Basically, it creates trouble in the respiratory tract, it uh, restricts the air flow during breathing and it causes a well-known disease which is known as bronchitis, pneumonia and related respiratory disorders which is there in this slide. It is dangerous for the vegetation also because two well-known diseases are also caused due to sulfur dioxide gas. First one it is said to be necrosis, the other one it is said to be chlorosis. Chlorosis means that the uh, green pigment chlorophyll which is found in the green leaves, uh, it is damaged due to this sulfur dioxide gas and the plant cannot manufacture their own food. Uh, by the process which is known as photosynthesis. Therefore, sulfur dioxide causes much threat to the plant life also and it causes white color of the leaves which is known as uh, uh, necrosis and yellow color of the leaves which is known as chlorosis uh, due to which the plant cannot manufacture their own food and they die and uh, the greenery is lost on this earth. Therefore, effect of sulfur dioxide is also very dangerous. Now comes the effect of oxides of nitrogen. As I already told you that the main source of oxides of nitrogen is the automobile exhaust or the fuel which is used in the industry because it first forms NO which is known as nitric oxide and then it is further oxidized to NO2, N2O3, N2O4 or N2O5. Therefore, 
This oxide from nitrogen is also very dangerous for the environment and on the human uh, it causes a lungs disease which is known as bureaucy and uh, it, it plays an important role in the formation of a smog which is known as photochemical smog. A photochemical smog is a mixture of uh, uh, smoke and uh, fog and uh, it uh, causes a hazy atmosphere, troubles in breathing and uh, a person dies due to suffocation. So smog is a mixture of smoke and fog and uh, there are two types of smog. First one I have already discussed you, London uh, smog and the Los Angeles smog. Then we have effect of hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons mean that it consists of hydrogen and carbon. They are relatively inert in the atmosphere, but they play an important role in the formation of secondary products, which is known as smog. Smog is very dangerous, I will discuss in the earlier slide. It causes uh, eye irritation, then it causes problems in the lungs and some uh, skin burns, cracking of the skin and damage to the plant life. Therefore, hydrocarbons are also very very dangerous. Uh, though they are inert in the atmosphere, the, but they play an important role in the formation of secondary product which is known as smog. Now comes the effect of particles. Particles, I have already told you that fly ash from thermal power plant, the particles mainly released from uh, uh, industries, mainly cement industry, glass industry and various other chemical manufacturing unit. The particles present in the atmosphere include smog, dust, mist, fumes and are harmful for human being and the environment in the variety of ways. The two, these are carcinogenic also means that they are cancer producing and they cause two well known disease which is known as black lungs disease and pulmonary fibrosis. Black lung disease is black lungs disease. The other one it is known as pulmonary fibrosis. Pulmonary fibrosis. Therefore, these are uh, the two diseases which are caused due to particle pollution. So, now comes the control of air pollutants. Since pollutants are released from variety of sources, the natural sources, the man-made sources, and we already talked about uh, that the natural ones are uh, less harmful, but the man-made pollutants are very very harmful and they are causing much threat to the environment. The climatic changes which are taking place day by day, the acidic rain that we have global warming which is known as greenhouse effect. In the later lecture I will discuss about this topic which is known as greenhouse effect. Then we have depletion of the ozone layer, smog formation and ultimately we are exploiting this nature. Therefore the control of these air pollutants is a must. So what we can do is that, just think for this, how to control these pollutants. There may be some physical methods, there may be some chemical methods or there may be some technological steps for controlling these air pollutants. So let us discuss about some of the methods which are used for controlling these air pollutants. First one is removal of source. The source from which air pollutants are released, it can be removed from that place. Change of process, if a process is obsolete, obsol uh, it's old or it is old in technology, then we can change the process. Then we have extraction of pollutants. There are some chemical methods, there are some devices and equipment which are used for extraction of these pollutants from where they are released. The removal of pollutants creating material from the fuel, changing the fuel or substitution of the fuel with low concentration of pollutants. We can stop the process altogether if it is much threat to the environment and it can be shifted to other areas uh, which are away from residential colonies. Then we have electricity generators 
generation can be done by nuclear process instead of coal fired process though nuclear radiations are all very dangerous but care must be taken and if proper care is taken and proper devices are installed then the nuclear energy is the best source of energy then a new location for essential plants so the, these are some of the methods which can be used for controlling these air pollutants but we will emphasize on the chemical methods for controlling these pollutants therefore in the next slide i will explain the control of oxides of sulfur which is released from various sources it may be fertilizer industry may be a thermal power plant or any other industry from where the oxides of sulfur is emitted here we are using limestone the formula is calcium carbonate cacio3 or lime which is calcium oxide or a very important ore which is known as dolomite cacio3 dot mgco3 now see what how this sox is uh, removed from the fuel gases or how sulfur dioxide is uh, changed to some another form so that it does not cause much threat to the environment you see that calcium carbonate which is limestone when it react with uh, sulfur dioxide in the presence of oxygen it will form calcium sulfate along with carbon dioxide gas and this calcium sulfate is known as gypsum if cso4 dot xh2o it is known as gypsum it can be used with other industry basically uh, with cement industry therefore the volume of sox which is released from various industry sorry the volume of sox which is released from various industry can be converted into calcium sulfate the other treatment is calcium oxide when it react with sulfur dioxide it also form calcium sulfate this dry sulfate powder can be taken out and can be washed out and can be used with other industry the next is the acid and acidic fumes can be removed by passing the gas through alkalized alumina or activated carbon or limestone uh, powder the so2 containing gases from fertilizer factory etc are passed to ammonia uh, where ammonium sulfide is first formed and then it is converted into ammonium sulfate you see the chemical reaction ammonia nh3 plus so2 plus h2o it will result in the formation of first ammonium sulfide and then it is converted to ammonium sulfate sometimes the gases can be scrubbed with water and resulting solution is made to react with lime and this process is effective in removing up to 95% of sulfur dioxide next is the oxides of nitrogen so we have already removed sulfur dioxide through chemical method whereby sulfur dioxide was converted into calcium sulfate or it was adsorbed on alkalized alumina or it was converted to ammonium sulfide or ammonium sulfate now you see what about the control of nox as i already told you that nox is mainly emitted from uh, combustion of a fuel from motor vehicle exhaust from chemical manufacturing units therefore it needs to be controlled and the chemical method used for treatment of nox is uh, you see the chemical reaction NO which is nitric oxide if it is released into the atmosphere it is inert it is not that harmful but it is then oxidized to nitrogen oxide dioxide NO2 plus NaOH the sodium hydroxide it results in the formation of NaNO2 and NaNO3 mean that sodium nitrite and sodium nitrate is formed similarly if NO2 is made to react with sulfuric acid then it forms NO dot HSO4 which is known as nitrosyl hydrogen sulfate sometimes NO and NO2 also react to form N2O3 and this N2O3 is then made to react with sulfuric acid to again form nitrosyl hydrogen sulfate had the had this method not been there then this oxides of nitrogen would have played an important role in the formation of acid rain or in the formation of smog therefore the treatment of oxides of nitrogen is a must so what is the next reaction in this case also 
uh, nitrosyl hydrogen sulfate is formed when it is made to react with sulfuric acid. Here also, nitrogen trioxide, when it was made to react with sulfuric acid, it formed nitrosyl hydrogen sulfate plus water. Uh, therefore, this nitrogen, uh, nitrosyl hydrogen sulfate is decomposed to give sulfuric acid and nitrogen dioxide and the cycle goes on and thereby this oxides of nitrogen whether it is NO, NO2, N2O3, N2O5 or any other oxides of nitrogen is released is not released directly into the atmosphere and it does not play uh, much uh, role in uh, polluting the environment. Next comes the control of carbon monoxide as I already said that carbon monoxide is very dangerous gas it has more affinity towards oxygen it reacts with hemoglobin to form carboxyhemoglobin and the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood is lost and the person dies due to suffocation therefore the volume of carbon monoxide which is uh, released due to incomplete combustion of a fuel or incomplete oxidation of a fuel is uh, done by the help of uh, catalytic converters and the best catalytic converters are platinum or palladium which converts carbon into carbon dioxide and hydrogen into water. Therefore, the possible approach to control carbon monoxide pollution is to substitute gasoline with some other effective fuel. Uh, the one such replacement can be alcohol, but the combustion products are very very dangerous therefore uh, it has not been used for commercial purpose. Control of odor. Different types of foul smell and odors are complex mixtures of aldehydes, ketones and amines. Therefore, they need to be controlled and one such method is either by adsorption on activated carbon, combustion in flame or the common catalysts can be used are alumina, silica and iron oxide which adsorb the foul smell and odor and this is how the pollutants can be controlled. Now comes the control of particulates. Particulates, I told you that dust, mist, smoke, fog, all these comes under particulate type of pollution. Therefore, it needs to be controlled because they serve nuclei for the formation of clouds, mist, fog, snow, etc. and they are present in nature by incomplete combustion and they are released from, along with the industrial dust. In general, there are four methods used for controlling this particulate pollution. First one it is said to be a settling chamber. First one it is said to be S-E-T-T-L-I-N-G settling chamber. This is one of the methods used for controlling the pollute, uh, particulate pollution. The second one is said to be a gravity separator. Gravity separator. The third one it is said to be electrostatic separator. Electrostatic separator. I will explain each of them separately. Settling chamber, what do you mean by this settling chamber? This is a new term for you students, but I will be explaining you this what do you mean by settling chamber. Then we have gravity separator. The basis of this is a gravity, a gravitational force. The third is electrostatic separator means that if the gravitational force, uh, gravitational field is replaced by the electrical field, therefore the efficiency of the uh, process becomes fast. And the fourth one it is said to be a cyclone separator. Cyclone separator. I will come to each of them separately. What do we mean by settling channel? It is a big size tank which is fitted with a plate which is known as a baffle plate. I will draw a diagram of this. It is a huge apparatus. It is like this. Inside there are certain plates fixed for collecting the uh, particles on the surface of these plates and then they, they can be taken out. Uh, from here inlet 
the gases containing uh, particles are passed through this chamber. They are retained for about 24 to 48 hours and due to uh, force of gravity, the heavier particles will settle on these plates and the clean gas without the particulate uh, can be taken out. But since you see that uh, this, the efficiency of this uh, settling chamber is not much because it cannot be used for industrial purpose. The reason for small scale industry it can be used for, but for large industry the settling chamber cannot be used. The reason is that the, this is a very slow process because it is based on the gravitational force. The heavier the particles uh, they will settle down and the uh, rest of the particles they will remain suspended. Therefore to improve the efficiency of this settling chamber or the gravity separator we have another technique which is known as electrostatic separator. What do we mean by electrostatic separator? Here, the gravitational force is replaced by electrostatic field. I draw the diagram to make you understand about this electrostatic separator. You can also draw this diagram along with me. It also consists of a huge chamber. Uh, this is a positive voltage or potential of about 13,000 volt. The here it is a negative plate. Within this area, a strong electrostatic field is generated. So the particles which are negatively charged, when it comes in contact with 30,000 volt positive uh, atmosphere then they get rubbed off their uh, negative charge they come closer to each other they become heavy and all the particles they settle down in the form of ash and then can be green I will show you a, a slide which shows about this electrostatic separator uh, this gas containing particles it is sent to a chamber having potential of 30,000 volt under the influence of strong electrical field, the smooth particles get rubbed off their negatively charge and they come closer to each other and they settle at the bottom of the apparatus. Next is filtration oblique scrubbing. This can be done for very fine particles which can neither be removed by settling chamber or electrostatic separator. Here the filtration and scrubbing is done for very fine particles present in the gas. Uh, it is passed through a sheet of made up of asbestos which does not allow the particles to pass through it and if needed a counter current fine spray of liquid can be done to retain these particles uh, within that area otherwise they will be emitted into the atmosphere therefore filtration and scrubbing can be done for very fine particles which are present in the gas stream and it is passed through a sheet of asbestos or glass wool which can retain these uh, fine particles within that sheet and if needed I already told you that a uh, spray of uh, water or any other liquid can be done to retain these uh, small particles present in the gas stream. The last is cyclone character or it is known as cyclone separator. I draw a diagram for this. It also consists of a vertical chamber. At the top of the chamber a uh, uh, mechanical string is fitted and it creates a centrifugal force. This is a mechanical uh, string, S-T-R-I-N-G. This is a vertical chamber and the gases are passed from the bottom of the apparatus and here exit of the uh, gas without particles will take place. Uh, when the uh, gas is passed through this inlet containing particles, this mechanical string will move in a circular fashion and it will generate a centrifugal force. The fine particles present in the gas will be thrown towards the wall of the apparatus and where they will slide down and they will slip down and here it will be collected in the form of dust. 
there is another compartment where the uh, fine particles can be collected in the form of dust. Therefore, this is one of the best method for controlling the particulate pollution. Cyclone separator. I will show you the uh, diagrams. This is a cyclone separator. This is a, a cyclone separator. From here the gas containing particles are uh, introduced in this. There is a mechanical uh, uh, string which is fitted as I already explained you. Just you see here. This is the cross section of this cyclone separator. Uh, from here the clean gases comes out. From here the dirty gases enter and when they come in contact with the centrifugal force, the particles they are thrown toward the wall of the apparatus and they are collected here in the form of dust and that is how the cyclone separator works. I will show you gravity setting chamber I have already discussed with you. From here the gases are passed containing particles. These are collected in various chambers. These are coarse particles. These are intermediate, intermediate size particles. Then we, these are fine particles. And all these settle down due to force of gravity. So this is a slide showing gravity setting, settling chamber or gravity setting chamber. This is also one of the techniques used for collecting the particles. This is known as eco clean bag filters. Uh, this is a very complicated uh, diagram which you are watching on the slide, but the process is not that complicated because uh, from here the gas containing particles pass through this uh, device which is known as bag filter. Uh, filtering bags are fitted here as you see in this diagram or in this figure and the dust which is uh, uh, collected in this filter bag and they can be taken out uh, from time to time. This is known as eco clean bag filter. You can draw this diagram. This is a theory about the bag filter. It is a device used to trap particulate by filtering gas stream through large fabric bags. In the earliest nights, you have seen that there, these are some of the bags which are there which is known as filtering bags and it results in holding these particles and these are typically made up of glass fiber fabrics or glass fibers. These are bag filters. This is a slide for electrostatic precipitator. I already explained you uh, about this that the gravitational field is replaced by a strong electrostatic field and how this process takes place the waste containing smoke particles travel from here and there is a negatively charged metal grid here a positively charged uh, plate is here and about 30,000 volt or voltage is created within this area the negatively charged uh, the negative charge of the particles get rubbed off and these particles they come closer to each other it becomes a heavier particle and it settles to the uh, bottom of the apparatus in the form of dust so this is one of the uh, slides showing electrostatic separator these are the scrubbers I uh, already discussed that this is scrubbing is done for very fine particles uh, which are present in the gas stream sometimes a spray of liquid can be done and sometimes water can be spray, uh, sprayed for holding these small fine particles so that they do not go uh, along with the gas stream this is also one of the slides uh, have been taken from cement industry which shows a scrubbing uh, technique these are the scrubbers which are the few gases flow from here the spray of water is done to hold these particles and the clean gas moves from here and it is then released therefore all the particles which are there in the gas stream they are scrubbed means that a spray of liquid or water is done from here two gases uh, uh, made to enter inside this apparatus and this is known as limestone wet scrubber technique. Now the control of gaseous pollutants. How these can be controlled? Which are released from combustion process. 
they can be controlled by either absorption or by adsorption process let us see how these uh, can be controlled control of ozone mobile pollutants the fuel used it mainly releases oxides of carbon oxides of nitrogen sulfur oxide therefore to control the ozone mobile pollutants we can have a multi point fuel injection engine we can have a catalytic converter which can convert the carbon into carbon dioxide or uh, complete oxidation will take place by using good quality automobile fuels and uh, the uh, load of lead in the exhaust can be used uh, can be reduced by using lead free petrol we know that lead the compound of lead which is known as tetra ethyl lead which is used as anti knocking agent uh, uh, it comes uh, when it is burned along with the fuel then lead is emitted into the atmosphere and in the i start of the lecture i discussed that lead is very very dangerous because it enters the blood stream it causes headache nausea it affects the central nervous system also and it may cause heart disease also and the toxic contaminant in uh, uh, gases can be minimized by using uh, uh, it can be minimized by using compressed natural gas as one of the fuel so uh, this is the effect of air pollutants this i have discussed in my next lecture if you have any uh, question to ask you can raise your queries or in the next lecture i will start with this effect of air pollution on human health thank you very much